Hi there, today we'll look at blockwise parallel decoding for deep autoregressive models by Mitchell Stern, Noam Shazir, and Jakob Ushkoray uh, of UC Berkeley and Google Brain. So this is a bit more of an engineering paper than usual, which is which I find cool. Um, it's, it's basically an engineering trick to get these autoregressive models to decode faster uh, while you can either preserve fully their performance or suffer a bit of a drop uh, in performance while even speeding them up more. All right, so let's dive in, actually. The, the paper starts out with a description of what autoregressive models are and what decoding is um, in them. So uh, let me try to quickly, quickly explain this. So an auto, what is an autoregressive model? So basically, we're talking about, um, let's say, language models. So language models are the classic examples of these models, where you have a, a language model is a model that simply predicts the next word in a sequence. So you could have something like a cat sits on the, and then here, is blank. So the language model is asked to predict which word is the word that follows. Uh, the language model basically does this by predicting the the probability distribution over the next word. So w t plus one. If this is this is t here, this is t minus one, and so on. W t plus one given all the w's smaller or equal than t. So all the words. Uh, that come before should lead to the, the next word being predicted. So the language model is tasked to ask what is the next word in the sequence um, or what's the probability distribution over the next word and then you can simply you know pick the maximum probability word or something like this. So that's that's pretty um, standard so far. So what is the autoregressive part in here. So basically the, the autoregressive part means that in order for me to find this word here, this next word, I will look at all of these words here. And what does it mean then when I want to use this language model for generating generating uh, a sentence, let's say. So um, now I've trained the language model. It's really good at predicting the next word. Now I want to actually use it to do something more interesting. So I I want it to generate a full sentence. What I do, let's say I pick the first word, the, right? I pick the first word. And I simply ask the language model, why, well, what's the next word, right? Um, and the language model can do this. It can assess what's the probability distribution here over words. And it will, for example, give me some, some distribution over words, and I pick the maximum one, I say, okay, the maximum one here is house. Okay, the house, the house. And then I go back and I ask the language model, now well, what's the next word then? See, clearly you're a language model, so you can give me, based on the two previous words, you can give me the next word, what's the next word? And the language model will maybe say the, the house is, and so on. So you can see how you can generate a sentence by simply, um, basically feeding the answer that the language model gives, feeding it into the next step of predicting. So all of these now go into the next step. And once you've predicted the next step, the house is um, on once you've predicted that, then you can take that and in conjunction with everything you've predicted so far to predict the next step. So you can use the language model that is trying to predict the next word to predict an entire sentence. And the autoregressive part basically means that its own predictions will serve as the basis for the next uh, predictions. And this introduces a fundamental problem, namely that I have to basically wait for one prediction. So I have to wait here for is before I can predict on. And this means if I have a, I basically can't help but, so if this is my language model, it's a box. I can't help but go to the language model, wait for a response. Okay, then 
go to the language model again, wait for a response again. This is an in inherently sequential nature here, where I have to do like m steps if, if m is the length of the, of the sentence that I want. Um, and we can't make use of batching normally. So usually what you do during training, during training you have a whole bunch of data, right? You have the cat sits on the mat. You have the house. The, uh, the house is blue. So I can generate just from these two sentences, I can generate a bunch of training example, I can ask, I can, this is a training example, where the input is the cat, and it's meaning to predict sits, uh, then this is a training example, where the input is the cat sits, and the language model has to predict on, this here is a training example, this, this is a training example. So I can chunk this up into a whole bunch of training examples. And all of those, I can write, I can feed in parallel into a big, big matrix, I can all put them here, and then run this thing through my language model in training mode, because each of them is already like is in the corpus. I can, I can, I can, I can batch the training, but I can't batch the prediction because of what we've seen before. Because inherently the next predicting the next word depends on the last word that the model itself has output. So there is no no training corpus around since we're we're not training. Um, yeah, so this is the fundamental problem. And these authors tackle this problem, they say, how can we make this faster, this decoding? So they introduced greedy decoding here, where they say, okay, this is what we've just what we've just seen. Um, the uh, probability of the next word is like the the maximum the maximum log probability here in that case, if the model predicts a log probability um, over the words that we've input so far, right? And this x here is so this is, for example, a translation task, a machine translation task. So the x would be the source language sentence. So maybe like a French sentence, and the y uh, smaller equal to j would be the so far decoded English sentence if we're trying to translate to English. And the y j plus one would be the next word that we're trying to predict in the English sentence given the English sentence so far and the French sentence, the total French sentence. So greedy decoding just does this one step after another. Um, and we'll, we'll, we try to go to what they call blockwise parallel decoding. So we can just jump to the graphics straight away, because what they do is pretty straightforward and um, is best illustrated in this graphic, actually. So they go from the from this situation where they already have this here, they have a, a saw a dog ride. This is the the sentence that has been decoded so far. And we'll, we have to try to complete it. Naturally, we'll ask what's the next word. But they say, Okay, what if we could predict not only the next word from this, but the word two positions away, or three positions away, we could do this all at the same time. Right? I mean, I can certainly build a model, a language model that doesn't only predict the next word, but predicts the word after that as well. Though, of course, if then the this word, the predictor for this word still only gets this as an input. So this is the important thing here. So the, the part of the model that predicts the is two words away, doesn't isn't being informed that this word is being produced here. So naturally, you would expect the quality to be worse because the the word one position away, two positions away and three positions away are each predicted basically independently of each other, just from the from the source context. So there's no, there's no, you can't expect like a, a coherency between the words or not, not a lot. So this is the, the fundamental trade off with such a model, you can predict farther into the future at the same time, but then these predictions can't basically depend on each other. 
Um, and this degrades your performance quite a bit. So what these authors do is to remedy that they say, well, these, these things here, we can, I mean, we can produce a bunch of them, right? Since, um, all that's required as an input is this, we can actually produce, like we can produce a batch of them at the same time. So we can produce one, two, and three words into the future. And we can do this like a hundred times in parallel, no problem. <clears throat> all right. And we can, we can sample this. We don't have to always take the most likely word. We can actually uh, sample a bunch into the future. And this now gets smarter because now I have a list of 100 basically suggestions of what the continuation here could be, right? I have, I take this not as a given, but I take these outputs as suggestions, right? And then I can have another model that this is called verify here. I can have another model that scores all of these different, um, all of these different decodings in parallel. Both of these can be done by the same model. We saw the language model can be either used to predict or to score something since it inherently predicts the probability of sequences or of following words. We can, um, we can let it output this probability all in parallel. So this, this also can count as a score. So what I'm trying to say is you can, you can, since the language model is constructed as a, as outputting probabilities anyway, like such, we can use it both to predict the next word. And also if we have a suggestion, we can use it to score that and to say, okay, how likely is that? Right. And then what we can make sure is that the suggestion, we are looking for the suggestion basically that has the highest score. And if you want to be really true to your original model, you say, I want to look for the suggestion that has the, the maximum that would have had the maximum score had I decoded one by one. So then basically you, you retain the original performance and you gain a speed up as long as the, what the greedy decoding would have produced is in your um, suggestion, in your box of suggestions that you produce. As long as that's in there, you gain a speed up. If that's not in there, then you can always, you always have the, the one word ahead model because that's, you have that anyway. You predict the next word anyway. So in case none of these suggestions work out, you still have this one word prediction basically, which is the, the, cla the um, model you started with. So at worst case, you're as fast as the, the greedy model. And in best case, you always, your, your suggestions are so good that they're always the one that would have been decoded anyway. So you can basically, in this case, um, do three steps at once. <clears throat> All right. So this verify step here is, is shown here and, um, you see it, it will decode. Now this is just one suggestion. Keep in mind, they can produce many suggestions uh, at the same time if, if there's memory um, or, and they can actually, they can score each of this. So they can score this, they can score this, and they can score this also independently as a batch. Um, <clears throat> so they can do this in parallel. And here you see, yeah, here is the executed in parallel. So the model will go and will score this word in and says, ah, oh, this would have been, this is the argmax of the greedy decoding anyway. And it can also score this step and say, aha, given that there is an in that this, the, the is the argmax anyway, right? And it can score this step and say, a given that there's in the, the argmax would have been car. And so that's not bus. So we reject this suggestion, but we keep that part of the suggestion and say, okay, the in the is basically what would have been uh, decoded anyway, according to the greedy decoding. Um, <clears throat> so we can basically uh, accept this here and continue from there. Yeah, this is the accept step here. So this basically 
so you can see in this one step, which yeah, we'll call one decoding step, we have basically done two of the greedy decoding steps in one go. So by predicting into the future and then selecting the one that agrees with the original model. Because we can, the, the fundamental thing is we can score in parallel, but we can greedily produce not in parallel. All right, so they actually push this further um, by also eliminating one of the one of the evaluations here by combining basically the uh, the next predict step with the previous verify step and it's it's pretty cool to look at that so we're in the same situation you have this and you suggest this continuation and then the scoring model again will go will go here um, but while you verify, you also do the next predict at the same time. Since you're, you've built your model, since it's the same model, and this model, every time you execute it, it outputs a distribution over the next uh, set of positions, you might as well take the outputs of it, right? So when you then decide to accept this here, you will already have the outputs computed for the next three positions. So this you can feed directly into this next predict step. You basically don't have to execute it. You simply go to the one you've accepted and then you look at the outputs that you get anyway uh, from this model and use them. So you might ask, okay, which which how does a model look that like scores and predicts into the future? And this, the answer is here. It's a bit out of order. I would have maybe liked this more previously, but in any case, this is what they do. So they, they use a transformer architecture and you have to imagine it starts down here. And actually there is a huge network down here, right? This is just the output layer. So there's a giant transformer network um, down below and it produces this output representation. Now normally from this representation you would go to this what's called P layer here. This is a output vocabulary projection. So this has one entry for each of the words in your vocabulary. So the, a, cat and so on. And um, you would then for each one predict a probability. So with this representation you basically project it onto this vocabulary and uh, predict the probability distribution over the next word. But what they do is they say, no, 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 we, we not only need the next word, we need the next three words. So let's actually split this output signal into three output signals. And they do this by introducing this, um, this a hidden feed forward layer here or a hidden transformer layer. I don't know, it's, a, it's a hidden layer. Um, yeah, we insert a single feed forward layer with hidden size. Okay. Um, so they insert a hidden layer, uh, and then they also add these skip connections here, right? They add the skip connections, which basically just means they feed through this output directly to, to here and add it to that. So basically the feed forward layer needs to transform this output here into the vocabulary input one step ahead, two steps ahead, and three steps ahead. And you can see here, they, those are independent, right? They don't depend on each other. There's nothing feeding back P1 here into the decision of P2, so they can be executed in parallel, but they lose the, the dependence on each other. All right, so that's... Um, that's the, the architecture and you can clearly see here, it's able to predict three steps into the future at the same time. Um, so, yeah. All right, so they, they, they also do different adjustments where they say now, yeah, we can also kind of sacrifice um, a, bit of, a bit of the fidelity to the original model by not requiring that the Basically, we don't we don't only accept when the suggestion is the perfect best suggestion that would have been decoded by the greedy model, 
but what we could do is we could just if it's in the top k we could accept it if it's in the if it's good enough basically uh, one of the suggestions that we have is good enough then we'll accept it or when you have like some sort of distance metric they say here so the distance between our suggestion and the maximum so the what would have been best by the greedy should be smaller than some constant epsilon and that way you can sacrifice a bit of performance but your suggestions will be accepted much more often and thereby your, your speed up will be much higher and they also experiment with whether or not they should fine-tune the original model along with their model and also the experiment with knowledge distillation where they basically um, have like some some teacher model and you train the their your model on the output of the teacher model don't want to go too far into this since these these are mostly kind of um, things to make it work even better and you can see here that uh, this is for example a machine translation task so this is the WMT 2014 English German translation and there, so regularly they get a blue score of 26 and here uh, higher is better and if you can see they get a sp fairly sizable speed ups by um, keeping the blue scores fairly constant so they they almost speed up by 2x but if they allow the blue scores to go down a bit um they get a much higher speed up of like three and then if they do like distillation and fine tuning they actually manage to keep up the performance even though they get um very very high speed ups so they get speed ups until like 5x um by not dropping the blow scores uh very much so that's uh that's pretty impressive um another experiment they do is image super resolution where you can see here with regular they try to really keep exactly the original model output and it doesn't it doesn't speed it up too much but when they allow for a bit of a mistake to be made um, so here this is image super resolution so values are between 0 and 255 and they allow epsilon equals to 2 um, of that so that's, that's kind of less than 1% error on the individual pixel then they get a speed ups of 7x or something like this and you can see in this region here that when the k is 4 and k is the number of steps that you decode ahead so and the mini mean block size is 3.75 that means on average 3.75 steps ahead are accepted which means basically their their suggestions are almost always good enough uh, to be accepted so they get this massive speed up by basically being able to jump uh, these decoding steps um, yeah so they have a bunch of other results here they show their wall clock time speed up since oh, iteration speed up is well but if you have to pay in huge computational cost it's not so good but they also show that they have a big kind of wall clock speed up uh, up to up to 4x here in super resolution and over 3x in translation so it's a pretty cool paper uh, they give some examples here a bunch of more tables uh, some examples of their super resolution and yeah uh, if this might be something for you then use it it's I think it's a pretty neat trick and yeah especially for production systems all right that was it bye bye